So for the last several decades, my Sicilian side of the family gets together once a year and makes a boatload of raviolis. And I've actually never had the opportunity to do it with them until now. And I am crazy excited to go get my hands dirty. But first, we've got to go to Michigan to meet up with them. Sound good? Let's go on a road trip. It's just a quick five hour drive to Michigan. I've got plenty of coffee in hand. I'm taking in the scenery, checked out the biggest tire in the world while cutting through Detroit city on my way to Aunt Pam's house. Yep, the same Aunt Pam that helped me recreate my grandma's famous S cookies. Hi, I'm Billy's Aunt Pam and today is ravioli day and we're gonna show you how we do it. So our ravioli day started 28 years ago with my good friend, Judy. She asked me to help her make raviolis for her mom's 70th birthday. And we've been making them ever since. And one day my two sisters stopped by, Kathy and Virginia. They wanted to help. They brought lunch and they wanted to help. And when we put them to work, they didn't really remember what they were doing. So they did not stay. They stayed for lunch and hit the road. But the next year they did come back and then they started bringing their daughters. And a few years later, my nieces brought their daughters. So it has become this big event every year and it's so much fun. So we usually get started about 10 o'clock and the eating doesn't stop all day. We'll have breakfast and coffee and about noon, we're gonna have sandwiches and chips and then we get back to work. And when we're finished, we clean up. We hopefully will have 2,400 raviolis. We will clean up. I have a big pot of sauce already on the stove uh, getting hot and we're gonna use that and have dinner later. So Judy is no longer with us and my sister Virg is not either, but my sister Kathy unfortunately is sick today, but we're still gonna make 2,400 ravioli and I'm sure the girls are watching over us. And it was pretty cool. My aunt paid tribute to the original cast of Ravioli Day by having their pictures all over the place in the kitchen. It was awesome. But first, there are so many treats. I've got to try one, right? Yeah. I don't even know what this is, but I'm going to try it. So I found out this thing is called a garbage cake. I have no clue what's in it or how to make it, but pretty much it was the most delicious coffee cake I've ever eaten. All right, time to start some filling. Okay, so to make the filling, we start out with ground beef. You can use 80 to 20 lean to fat ratio, or you can even do 90-10 here. We got the cheese. It's best to use whole milk ricotta cheese, but if you can find sheep's milk ricotta, even better. Eggs. And these can be room temperature or straight from the fridge. Romano cheese. If you can't find Pecorino Romano, Parmesan Reggiano is a great substitute. And then seasoning, so salt, pepper, a little bit of oregano, some parsley, garlic powder. Now you know I like the granules better than the powder, but you can use either here. I make a big batch, but I'll give Billy some measurements for a normal, something normal that'll make maybe three dozen. And so once the filling is all mixed, we fry some up and give it a taste to be sure it's seasoned enough. And I'm telling you, it's in my DNA. Season once, taste twice. Taste it, season it, taste it again, see what else it may need. Fry a little piece up. And of course, let's get the final verdict from Aunt Pam after she gives it a try. Boom, all thumbs up, we're good to go. So to make the dough, we start with uh, durum semolina flour. It's incredibly important to use fine ground semolina flour. Do not use coarse. If you cannot find that, because it can be tough to find, use zero zero flour or even bread flour. Some salt. Use sea salt, kosher salt, or even normal table salt will work for this recipe. Mix it in the processor. Just going to give it a few pulses to incorporate all the ingredients. And separately, I mix oil, eggs, and water. So in a small measuring cup, my aunt whisked together a few large eggs that were from the refrigerator, some olive oil, a little bit of water, which will help loosen up the dough and make sure it's soft. Mix that together. Just give it a whisk until everything's combined. And then I pour it through the chute of the food processor and while it's running till it makes the dough. Aunt Pam said during this process that you need to watch it. You may need a little bit more cold water or you could even substitute in olive oil. What you're trying to do is get it to clump together and form a dough ball. This is exactly what it should look like when you're done in the food processor. And then once it clears the sides of the bowl, then we take it out and knead it a little bit and let it rest. You may need an extra tablespoon or two of flour when kneading it. It will get to a point where it's very soft to the touch when you give it a squeeze. Then what she does is place it right under a bowl and lets it rest. So once the pasta is ready to roll, then we cut it and we slice it and cut it into pieces, dredge it in flour, and we start putting it through the pasta machines. So you start at the widest point, you cut off a bit 
flatten it a little bit and start putting it through with the widest point and gradually keep folding and putting it through the machine till it's thin enough. And then it needs to be able to fit over the ravioli tray. So we have a mold, the ravioli tray. It's great if you can let it dry for just a few minutes, but they needed dough so fast that we only had a couple of these hanging. And I'm telling you what, with my dad helping run the ship, this was a well-oiled machine. My cousins were cranking out dough left and right. At this point, let's turn it over and show you how to fill everything up. Follow it well, put a piece of dough on there. Then we take the filling and put a teaspoon and a half or so in each slot. And it's important to only use about a tablespoon to a tablespoon and a half of meat. If you do too much, it will not seal together. And the worst part is if you boil it, it's going to explode. And well, at that point, you don't really have ravioli anymore. And then you take another piece of rolled dough, put it on top, flour it again, and then cut it with your rolling pin. You just roll it and it will cut all the edges and all in between, and then you turn it out onto a cookie sheet. So you can use these little rollers like this or even a regular rolling pin. And what you want to do is at an angle, press down around the outside, which sort of cuts through the dough and releases it. Then you go back and gently roll it over the center and go through the middle as well to make those ravioli marks. Lift up the excess dough around the outside. Of course, they're going to use that, so don't go far with it. And then you just flip it over right onto a cookie sheet tray that's been lined with parchment paper. And then you fill it up until it's time to make more. And then once we fill that sheet, we put them in the freezer and freeze them. And once they're frozen solid, then you can break them apart. Put them in bags and you're good to go. When you're filling the ravioli trays, you want to be careful that you don't use too much filling because you don't want filling in your dough. The scraps that come off of that, when you roll it out and you pull the scraps off, we rework those scraps so that we don't waste any. So I'm always telling everyone, no meat in the dough because then you have to pull it out and throw it away. So, and they all know it and all the young ones are all, today they were yelling, no meat in the dough, no meat in the dough. I go, good girl. <laughs> And the next several hours, I got to admit, were a little bit of a blur. Constant ravioli making non-stop. But finally, after about two and a half, three hours, Aunt Pam decided to yell out union break. So she wasn't lying. Right on the dot, she had a bunch of submarine sandwiches that she already made, sliced them up, put them in a tray, and then everyone got to eat them, and they were absolutely delicious. But the problem was... We maybe only got 20 to 30 minutes to do this because after this, it was right back to work, to more pasta making, to more filling. And this lasted actually for several more hours. We're talking a total here of probably six hours of dough making and filling. When I said it was a blur, I wasn't lying. And I'm pretty sure I'm going to be dreaming about ravioli for the next several days. But one of the best parts about being in Michigan during the wintertime is you have your own personal outdoor freezer. So we lined them up on a speed rack and we kept them outside, which froze them up perfectly. When the raviolis are all made, we work the pasta dough and also cut pasta through the pasta machines. So we will cook raviolis and pasta today. The sauce is warm and raviolis that are all in their tray form and they're soft because they're not frozen yet. I'll cut them with a pizza cutter is how I do it. I cut it with a pizza cutter. We'll probably cook 15 dozen today because we are a lot of people. We're 30 people today. So we'll cook. Everybody has to donate a few dozen is what happens. The raviolis are done boiling when they float to the top and you have to let them cook a little bit and then we start tasting them. We don't want the dough to be gummy. You want the dough to be cooked all the way through and the filling should be cooked too. Once they have floated to the top, you want to cook them for additional five to six minutes to make sure they're cooked through. I just love to have my whole family together, my sisters and all their kids and their kids' kids. Oh, so for us, this is a big family day. Right? We've been, I've been coming here since my kids were little, probably around six and three. So they grew up with doing this every year, being part of making the ravioli, uh, being together with family. So it's a special day for us. It's getting together with family. Before the holidays, we make ravioli for Thanksgiving every year. I My kids used to come when they were little. And we have a blast and we're happy to have you here, Billy. And we do it every year and they always look forward to it. They're the girls that started out when they were six, seven, eight years old and now they're in college and they're here today. 
makes them feel really good. And it's a tradition that we started that I know my nieces will carry on when I'm long gone. And my aunt can attest to it as well. It always goes back to these fundamental cooking classic techniques. When you put them into practice, it will absolutely elevate your everyday cooking. And come on, you know I got in on this and made a bunch of raviolis myself. But for plating this up, I had Aunt Pam do this. We had several raviolis that have been boiled and put it right into a nice bowl. She liked to serve it up with a simple tomato meat sauce. You can use my spaghetti sauce or even my pomodoro sauce would be absolutely perfect for this. She finishes it off with a little fresh grated Pecorino Romano cheese. Again, you could use Parmigiano Reggiano if you'd like. And then, and of course Aunt Pam had this, she dried out her own flat leaf Italian parsley. It was beautiful, it was delicious. She garnished with that. And oh my gosh, I can't wait to get into this. So much fun, so delicious, such a great time hanging out with family. And if you love this recipe, definitely check out my three classic Roman pastas. You'll love it. I've got a great recipe video. I'll see you on there.